So, I love The Legend of Zelda, and I am so excited for Tears of the Kingdom, which will be coming out very soon. I've been playing since I was four years old, and there's nothing quite like the feeling of a new Zelda game coming out. I look at new Zelda games as sort of milestones in my life. Each one means something different to me. This may sound a little weird, but in actuality, I look at Zelda games as sort of family members. And a new Zelda game means an addition to my family. They just mean so much to me, and I can't even properly describe it. So now after six years, we're getting a brand new Zelda game. And even though I'm so excited, I'm trying not to be too excited. Back in 2010 and 2011, when Skyward Sword was coming out, I was so excited for that game. Like, too much. It just consumed my life thinking about this game constantly, and constantly raising my excitement and expectations to the point where, when I finally got my hands on the game, I didn't really like it. My expectations were just so unrealistically high that the game couldn't possibly live up to what I wanted, and I was so devastated. Now, I don't feel that way anymore. I really, really love Skyward Sword. You can watch my Top 19 Zelda Games video to see, but that's only because I gave the game another chance about a year or so later, which gave me time to ground my expectations and really enjoy the game for what it was and not what I wanted it to be. I never wanted to feel that way with Zelda ever again, so since then I've been able to make my excitement much more realistic with healthy habits and carry it into A Link Between Worlds, Triforce Heroes, Breath of the Wild, and now Tears of the Kingdom. So with that being said, and my healthy amount of excitement and giddiness I have for this game, the same can't really be said for everyone else. If you just do a quick scroll through the comments on Nintendo's trailers, you'll see that the fan base is kind of divided, maybe like 60-40, to where 60% is very excited and optimistic. And then there's the small subsection that says it's already their favorite game ever made, like, come on guys, it's not even out yet. And then the other percentage is full of people kind of all saying similar things, like... Tears of the Kingdom is just DLC for Breath of the Wild. This game looks so uninspired. Really? Just a revamp of Breath of the Wild? It's already doomed, it looks exactly the same. Same map equals disappointment. Reusing everything from Breath of the Wild? Looks like crap. And so on and so on. So yes, I know that Zelda will always have its haters, but I've kind of been seeing these threads everywhere. Not just in comments, but people making videos on them. I also have people messaging me on Instagram saying that they're worried about this game because of these examples. Everybody seems to share and say the same things. So what's going on? I mean, this is a Zelda game we're talking about here. Why are people so worried about it? Well, that's kind of what I would like to talk about in this video. We can divide these doubts into three different sections, and when we're going through those sections, I'm going to try and approach them from a stance that encourages open-mindedness and optimism. So let's talk about the first and probably biggest cause for a lot of people's doubt towards this game. Which is... Tears of the Kingdom is just DLC for Breath of the Wild. So the reason why lots of people make this claim is because Ayanuma explicitly stated in an interview that this game started as DLC. But then there became so many ideas for it that they decided to just make a new game altogether. So longtime Zelda fans like myself heard this and honestly, we didn't really think twice about it. We were just kind of like, yeah, okay, makes sense. But many others were concerned about this, leading for them to claim that it's uninspired and stuff like that. And honestly, that's pretty understandable. Hearing that this game started as just DLC ideas, I understand your worry a little bit. But that is until you realize that almost every other Zelda game starts off this way. There are so many Zelda games where the team starts its process as one thing, and then those ideas morph and create something else. Don't believe me? Well, then let's go back to 1998 with Ocarina of Time. Did you know that Ocarina of Time's development originally started as nothing but a 3D remake of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link? What? This game started as just a remake? That makes it so uninspired and unoriginal, ugh! Well, actually, although the game started off this way, the team's conceptualizations changed along the way. The game morphed into something different, and it became a passion project for Nintendo. So then they were able to come out with Ocarina of Time, a game that we all love. Want another example? Well then let's look at another beloved game, Majora's Mask. 
Did you know that Majora's Mask's development originally started as just an expansion of Ocarina of Time? It was called Zelda Gaiden, and it was supposed to add some extra story elements. What? This game started as just an expansion of the last game? That makes it so uninspired and unoriginal. Ugh! Well, actually, although the game started out this way, the team's conceptualizations changed. It morphed into something different and became a passion project for Nintendo to which they released Majora's Mask. Still don't believe me? Then let's look at Twilight Princess. Did you know that this project originally started as a direct sequel to The Wind Waker, even going as far as Ayanuma referring to it as The Wind Waker 2? What? This game was supposed to be a sequel to Wind Waker? That means it's so uninspired and has no identity, ugh. Well, actually, although it started off this way, the team's conceptualizations changed. It morphed into something different and became a passion project for Nintendo. Are you seeing my point yet? Well, let's look at another Zelda game, A Link Between Worlds. This game started off as a 3D remake of A Link to the Past. What? This game started off as just a remake? That makes it so uninspired. Yeah, 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 okay, you get the point. Their conceptualizations changed and morphed into something completely different and became a passion project for Nintendo. Am I making this clear enough? The point that I am trying to prove is that so many Zelda games and even just video games in general start off as something different. Just an idea. We can't expect them to just have the story cut out from the very start. Even in examples where fundamental aspects of the game came to Ayanuma in a dream, like the idea of Wolf Link, it was still just an idea. He didn't have everything planned out and that's okay. This is a team working on these after all, and they continuously share and add ideas, see what sticks, and are able to build the game from there and let it take the shape that it wants to. Just because Tears of the Kingdom started off as DLC ideas, doesn't mean that it's going to be unoriginal or uninspired. I think we just need to let Nintendo do their thing and approach this with a little more open-mindedness. Okay, so let's talk about the second cause, which is people saying that this world is just going to be a copy and paste from Breath of the Wild's overworld. Now, this is a sequel, something that doesn't happen often in the Zelda series. I mean, it's been six years since Breath of the Wild was released, and we have just under nine minutes of footage for this game. That's it. Nintendo is playing this one very close to the chest, and so of course they're going to want to show elements that are somewhat familiar from the last game. They seem to have big things planned, and so there's no doubt in my mind that this world is not only going to have lots of key differences, but it will be expanded in ways that we can only guess. I mean, Link Between Worlds literally uses almost the same overworld layout as A Link to the Past, but they add so much that it feels like its own thing while still being so familiar. I don't see anybody complaining about this, but this game isn't even out yet, and people are thinking this will be the exact same world? Alright, for comparison, let's look at a recent sequel released, God of War Ragnarok. This overworld here is almost the same layout as the first game, but it does have so many very interesting and key differences to make it feel like its own. Does anybody complain about this? No? Then why do we about this game then? I feel like we just have to be much more optimistic about this, and just have some trust in Nintendo that this world will still have its own identity. Just because it's the same world does not mean there won't be new things to do and explore. Alright, and so now the third cause, which is something that I think everybody felt it. The gap between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is the longest the Zelda series has ever gone without the release of a new game. Longer than the five years between Link's Awakening and Ocarina of Time. So I think it's safe to say that a lot of us were under a sort of Zelda lull during this period, and just sort of starved for new content. The fact that we only have less than 9 minutes of footage for this game, heck the fact that Nintendo didn't even release the name of the game until 2022, I can completely understand why fans felt a little empty. This has literally never happened before. While past Zelda games were sharing satisfying footage and updates that could hold us over while in the process of being developed, the same cannot be said about Tears of the Kingdom. While Nintendo's mysteriousness and lack of information was intriguing at first, fans felt like the wait was just too long and their excitement dissipated. 
When Skyward Sword was coming out, my excitement was generated by the amount of teaser content I could watch about the game before it released. Tears of the Kingdom doesn't really have anything like that. Now, I'm not saying that that's at all a bad thing. It's just something that we haven't really experienced before with this series. Having to choose between the exhausting self-hype or letting the time slowly snuff out our excitement. It's totally understandable, and I know many other people who have felt this way. But my friends, the end of the wait is now in sight. This time gap has been difficult for so many reasons, and I am grateful that we have been able to unite and stay safe during these past years. So now that we will be playing this game very shortly, I ask that we approach this game with optimism and open-mindedness, not only for healthy feelings, but to unite as a fan base towards the fact that we have almost made it. I said before that I look at Zelda games as milestones in my life. I am not the same person that I was in 2017 with Breath of the Wild, and chances are you aren't either, and I think that that is just a beautiful thing. So all in all, I am very excited for Tears of the Kingdom, and I hope you are too. Will this video become impractical after the game releases? Maybe, probably, I don't know. But I do know that new Zelda games go through cycles before and after release, so if you can, Try not to be like 2010 me and continuously raise your expectations to unattainable levels. Instead, we should try to approach this game and future Zelda games with healthy excitement and optimism. Thank you everybody, I hope I was able to maybe change some perspectives about this game. If not, that's totally fine. At least I generated some excitement. If you have any opinions or viewpoints on Tears of the Kingdom, please feel free to comment about it. I always love reading what you have to say. And yeah, thank you again, everyone. Take care.